We're here with uh, Mike Williams at the uh, International Fly Tying Symposium. Mike just moved back from uh, Montana, That's right. but originally from Pennsylvania. Right. He's going to tie us a streamer today. He's got some great patterns out here. We'll show you a few uh, pictures later, but uh, what are you going to tie for us? I'm going to tie a wounded minnow today. And uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you came up with this pattern? Uh, the wounded minnow was derived from uh, an infomercial. I saw a, an, an instance where a bucket of minnows was thrown in with a lot of predators, and they weren't touched. And the guy took one minnow and bumped him to cause him to swim differently. And the moment that erratic action was caught and that wounded look, three separate predators came up and tried to tried to smash that one single minnow. Well, great. And so that's what led me to create something with a wounded type of fashion to it. Excellent. Well, we're going to show the uh, viewers a few of your patterns and then uh, do a little uh, tutorial for them here. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. All right. I'm going to start out by just grabbing a hook. Needle nose pliers are imperative for this part because what we want to do is slide it down in the tubing. And you want to go about an inch past the tubing itself and bury the eyelet in the whole hook so it's lost in the tubing. And we're going to place that in the vise. I'm going to take whatever kind of tool, whether it's a bodkin or tweezers. You just want to rough that ending up in order to give yourself a tie-in point. And for the thread, for this specific type of fly and the material being used, it's very slick material. As the thread has a hard time biting in, so I prefer the um, GHP, the gel spun thread. And I'm just going to start that thread right at the eyelet. Cut off the excess there. And all I'm going to do now is just a loose thread wrap right at the eye there. So basically you've caught the material, pinch it between your thumb and your forefinger, and just cinch that down. And that's going to capture that material right at your hook eye. A couple more wraps just to cinch it all down and finalize it. Push any excess out of the way. Big toenail clippers are invaluable. Instead of destroying your scissors for 99 cents, you can get something that takes a big clump of this stuff off at a time. It's very, very tough material. And we'll just get rid of the excess. Like so. We can leave this a little rough because we're not going to see the inside of it. And just simply whip finish that part. The next stage would be obviously we've got it all backed up here on the hook. And what we're going to do, similar to a tube sock, is just fold it back on itself. And what you create then is a hook out of the tubing. And you can see that, that hollow space there. So once we've created that part, we're just going to take a measurement for our tail that we're going to tie off. And I'd say approximately that long is good. So if I want my tail this long, we want to allow ourselves a little excess to tie upon because again the material is very slippery. So we'll clip that off, rough up the end, and we're going to take the hook and basically turn it backwards. And we're going to put that eyelet in the vise instead for ease of tying. Once it's like that, we're going to attach our thread again. You want to leave yourself a little excess thread because that's going to allow as a tag for a counter pull once we start to wrap this thread. Again, this part can be a little tricky for the first one or two times, but once you get the dexterity, it's, it's not any harder than the rest of the pattern itself. Let's just cinch that down. And this is your tag end again where you're pulling on the tag and the, and the, bod, the bodkin or 
bobbin itself rather. And I try to capture that tag just a few more times with my thread. Just again, it, it kind of acts as like more fingers, more intertwining to catch that and solidify the connection. Cut off the excess. And for the tail, I'm just going to use some little chickaboo feathers. Just pull the bases off and allow yourself a stem to work with. And what I'm going to do is just start the first one on top. Just simply wrap it in there. Nothing special or pretty. Just want to get your feather to stay. I'm going to place another one of these chickaboo feathers on the bottom of the pattern. And line that up. And again, these tie-in points don't have to be pretty. I'm going to show you a way how to hide any kind of ugliness on that tie-in point. Let's clip those stems out of the way. There we go. And use your hook itself to trap your line in there. Kind of allows you to manipulate your hands again without it unraveling and watch the feathers fly all over. I think I'm out of feathers over here. I have another one here. I tried to, for this particular one, I'm trying to find a feather with some, some longer fibers like this. You can see that they're considerably longer than, than the rest of the feather. And just like the tail, you just want to strip the butts off. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to find the concave side of the feather. And I want the concave side facing up. Because what that's going to allow me to do is when I tie that in and start wrapping like a soft hackle, it's going to right itself and all them fibers are going to push that way. I'll show you this instance right now. Just take the stem, concave side up, pointing away from you. Tie it in. Cinch it down nicely. Let's get rid of that stem. And then we're simply just, just like a soft hackle nymph, except it's uh, chickaboo instead of feather or what, what kind of feather have you. And you just Push them fibers out of the way and wrap another one, just like a soft tackle. Find your tip, and you just bring your thread through there one or two times to catch that. No need to trim the excess, we'll just use that along with the rest of the tail. And make a nice clean tie-off point there at the tail. like so. And we'll simply tie this off. I'm going to wet the tail and get all them fibers pushed back away from your working area just to make your tie off point a little bit easier. And just whip finish that tail. Like so. Now have tail end of our wounded minnow.